Thanks, Alan, and uh, thanks, Caroline. And it's, <coughs> it's great to see the work that is being done uh, at national level to, uh, to complement the work that we're doing in the, in the industry. So, as Alan said, my name is Owen O'Brien, and I'm the head of civil and environmental engineering in ESB International. And I'd like to thank CETA for the opportunity today to talk about our experiences with BIM over the last number of years. ESB International is just to introduce the company <coughs> is the engineering arm of ESB. We have approximately 650 staff, about 450 here in our head office at Dublin Airport. Mostly <coughs> engineers, civil, structural, environmental, mechanical, electrical. But we also have all the professions really across architecture, policy surveying, surveyors, and environmental scientists, and it's that mix I think that gives us <coughs> uh, what we can present today. It was clear from the start when we looked at BIM that it was basically an old brainer that we could get involved. So the question really was how could we do it? How could we get involved? Our focus in ESB International is on the planning design, project management, construction, commissioning, and operation and maintenance of basically electrical infrastructure. On the generation side, that means wind farms, which you can see there, thermal power stations, biomass, <coughs> wind, and solar. And on the transmission distribution side, it involves the design and construction and operation of substations, lines, and cables. The speakers today that you'll hear, John Byrne, John was the first person in my experience in ESB International to come and talk about the advantages of BIM a number of years ago. So it's apt that he's here today to talk about how we've applied it across particularly <coughs> substations, wind farms, but across electrical infrastructure generally. Donald Donnelly will address data capture, which is essential really in the, in the whole area of using BIM to best effect. And he talked about how the digital data is used in our BIM models. And Lee McManus will talk about, principally anyway, the application of BIM civil 3D to wind farms. And then we'll hear from Carey's, who will talk about their experiences of working with us and using BIM. Generally speaking, <coughs> our BIM journey started a number of years ago, and we took an approach of learning by doing. <coughs> by this I mean, rather than write a, a, a strategy, <coughs> we sent a number of our technicians into the field to get experience and to get training, uh, mostly in DIT. We also trained in civil 3D, and we quickly set about applying that knowledge on a trial basis on a number of projects in parallel with the traditional method. Then we stepped into using them on live projects, and we quickly began to learn the real challenges, I suppose, that, <coughs> and the real advantages that, um, that BIM offered us. In line with the collaborative approach that is essential for BIM, we began to work with contractors. Not all contractors were able to uh, take on board the full advantages of BIM, and that's a work in progress, but certainly Kerry's, who you'll hear from, were one that did. To date, we've trained 20 people in either uh, civil 3D or Revit. We've applied this training to live projects on buildings, and we've gained significant knowledge. But our ambition in the long term is to integrate that with the digital database <coughs> management of our facilities. That's the holy grail as far as we're concerned. And that's what we're working for. 
having a digital database approach to the full life cycle of projects will bring us huge advantages, we believe. The, we already have in place a digital database management of our commissioning and our operations in the field. And the challenge is to integrate that together with our BIM process <coughs> so that the databases that are produced during the BIM process will feed into that process so we have a full life cycle digital <coughs> project management uh, and we will gain all the advantages from that. We're fully aware that to do that we have to integrate it in with our, big, our digital strategy involving the collaborative platforms. There's a huge amount of software that we use in the company for the different activities. So we have to integrate BIM in with, into that, into those platforms, integrate into the systems. We have to embrace the cloud-based. Uh, <clears throat> we're generating, even already, we're generating huge amounts of data. So to manage that data, to store it, to manage it, is a challenge going forward. And then the area of using the mobile platforms and functionality in the field to gain full advantage from the use of BIM. We've started in that space, but <clears throat> it's the full integration of BIM into our overall digital strategy that will, I think, really give us huge benefits going forward. We firmly believe that the hands-on experience that we've gained in the projects that you're going to see will actually allow us to develop a strategy which will be rooted in our <coughs> real experience of the challenges and the advantages associated with BIM. Our focus has always been to try and leverage the value from BIM across <coughs> the full range of what we do. The digital technology associated with BIM is already impacting in a positive way, which you will see in a few minutes, on the projects. But, and on the, as I said, on commissioning, operation and maintenance of our facilities, <coughs> we have a digital database system in operation to manage that. It's bringing those together. That's our future ambition. This is a good point, I think, to take stock of what we've learned to date and to integrate it in together. And we believe that we can, we can do that going forward. And our hope this morning is that by sharing this experience with you, that we would shed some light on the challenges <coughs> associated with BIM and that we will also show <coughs> what the potential benefits that can be realized for all of us in adapting BIM going forward. Thank you.